Hello, this is John Friedland with AGWS. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are uh, in the United States. Uh, today we have our 2019 webinar series continuation. We have Bob Harkins, our Vice President of Training, presenting today on successful menu selling. Carved out for about 40 to 45 minutes of total time. Uh, during the entire presentation, you are able to uh, uh, go ahead and ask a question via the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen. We're going to try to answer those at the end. Uh, you can also email rharkins at agwsinc.com with any questions uh, at the close of this. This will also be recorded and available for you to listen uh, at a later date. Again, that's rharkins, R-H-A-R-K-I-N-S at agwsinc.com. So take it away, Bob. Thank you very much, John. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to those of you who joined us in January. And if you're new to the program, we welcome you as well. Welcome to American Guardian Warranty Services University. And as John said, our 2019 second quarter webinar this time around, it's uh, successful menu selling. And we'll look at and discuss today really three major things. Number one, to menu or not to menu, that is the question. Number two, menu introductions and presenting options. And last but certainly not least, uh, developing impact benefit statements for voluntary protection products. Go back up to the top again to menu or not to menu. That is the question. What I'm concerned about is, is, is menu usage and are we using a menu or not? Here at AGWSU, we have the opportunity to have people come to our uh, quarterly workshops here in Chicago and also do a lot of in dealership training, coaching, and development. And for myself and, and then Chuck Hobbs, our VP of sales and other members of our, our training team, we get into the stores and meet people from really over 40 states. I would say to you, the majority of, of, of people that come to class and stores that we get into are certainly using a menu, but I will also just say to you that it's certainly not uh, 100%. Uh, you know, there's been surveys and articles written in the past, NADA and others have done them about the menu usage in new cars and light truck dealerships. Uh, my memory says that uh, it was all we set up was about 75 or 80% as far as menu usage. I personally think it's probably a little higher than that but it's certainly not, uh, not, not 100%. But to begin by saying, let me share with you that I personally believe, and I know many of you that are joining us today, and you've heard me say this before, but I believe that a menu is not a panacea. A menu is not a panacea or a magic bullet for f &I success. Also, I would say to you that a menu is, uh, is not a panacea or a magic bullet uh, for, for, for compliance. Saying that, I think we certainly need to use it or consider it as both a, a sales tool and a compliance, a compliance tool as well. Uh, we do a lot of things with uh, acronyms here in class as we talk about compliance and ethics and abbreviations and that kind of thing. And I remember having a discussion some time back with my good friend uh, Dave Robertson, Executive Director at AFIP, when we were playing with the word uh, menu, spelled obviously M E N U, as, as it relates to uh, not being a panacea or a magic bullet for FNI &F success. All you have to do if you're an AFIP member or, or pull up uh, AFIP's information on the web is pull up their latest information on the seven deadly sins of F&I. Again, they're the seven most common errors because dealers become the targets of very bad things. Those bad things are media exposés, class action lawsuits, and high dollar regulatory fines. Um, what they would say is it doesn't take all seven of these to take you down, it only takes one. So if any one of these things becomes a pattern or practice that you're stored negatively, folks, you're guaranteeing yourself a class action lawsuit. It's just a matter of time. So, one of those seven deadly sins of F and I, quite frankly, is non-compliant menu sales. Non-compliant menu sales, and what we mean by that is menus are being changed or altered to hide the loaded payment, or altered after the fact to document or show acceptance of products that the customer did not agree to buy. So when we think of menu spelled M-E-N-U for most of us, hopefully all of us, uh, as an acronym, let's think of M standing for maximize, E standing for ethics. N stands for no or negate, and U stands for UDAP, U-D-A-P, meaning unfair and deceptive acts and practices. So our goal is to maximize ethics and no UDAP as it relates to our, uh, to our menu presentations. Secondly, secondly, on the negative side, from an acronym standpoint, M-E-N-U to those, of, uh, those stores that are involved in the seven deadly sins, non-compliant menu sales, unfortunately, to them, as far as utilization, M stands for, for manipulate, E stands for every, N stands for new, and U stands for up. So again, what's our choice? 
maximize ethics? No, you have. Hopefully that's it. And certainly not manipulate every, every new up. Uh, secondly, from a standpoint of uh, successful menu selling, okay, uh, those of you who had the opportunity to uh, join us uh, on the webinar in, in, in January, in January, we talked about uh, the three R's, the three R's that, that, that maximize deal profit. The three R's were refocus, recommit, and reassess. Just a, a, a quick refresher with respect to that, because that's really what sets this up for us. The three R's that maximize deal profit. Refocus, we talked about manufacturer focus groups from NADA and others, and it was the top four things that customers want in a buying or selling process. Remember what they were, they're not gonna appear on the screen, but here they are real quickly. Number one, they, they want uh, a sales and FMI process that is both uh, professional and transparent. Uh, number two, they want to talk with an individual, preferably one person who can help them find the vehicle that they want at a price and pain that they can afford. Number three and, and four are really the big ones that are right up our alley. Number three, they want an FMI experience that expedites the delivery process, not prolongs it. Number four, they want to talk with an FMI professional that, uh, that adds value to the buying process, not aggravation. So as you think about your menu sales, your menu presentation, is it adding value to the process, or from a customer point of view, is it uh, adding uh, aggravation? Commit was kind of interesting. We talked about recommit. That's the commit or pledge to conduct business the right way. Again, back to acronyms again, I like to spell R-H-I-T-T, -T, is how to spell right, R-H-I-T-T. -T. And uh, those five letters stand for five principles of our commitment of how we conduct business. R stands for respect, H stands for honesty, I stands for integrity, T stands for transparency, and the second T stands for trust. So our commitment here at our dealership, we do things a bit differently. Everything that we do is based on five principles, and folks will be happy to know because we care, those five principles are respect, honesty, integrity, transparency, and trust. Then last but not least, reassess. We talked about assess as reassessing the quality of our personal presentation to each and every customer and each and every day. And really, you know, role play with people in the store, our spouse, our business partners, whatever, and just ask them really how they feel about what we're saying. So number one, think about your personal presentation. Is it a monologue? Is it still a monologue? Hopefully not. Number two, is it a dialogue? Two-way communication? Hopefully that's true, but hopefully we haven't gone overboard with the dialogue to make it excessive. And, uh, and it's really becoming uh, excessive, and that just then leads, unfortunately, to combat, combative conversation. So if that's happening, certainly dialogue is improper uh, as, as well. And finally, we want to promote conversational selling and getting the customer involved uh, with the presentation that's low-key, downstream, and non-confrontational. Finally, with respect to really all three of these, focus, refocus, recommit, and reassess, we talked about committing to the FMI four-way stop. Remember what that was? Number one, from the standpoint of time, and we tied this into last year's JD Power report that the average time spent in a new car dealership for sales and FMI transactions is 187 minutes. That's the average, so some were a lot higher than that. It also said that among that 187, that 32 of those minutes are downtime. Customers waiting to get into the finance and insurance office. So we've been talking about, uh, Chuck Cobbs and myself and others, with the American Guardian group of companies, the FMI four-way stop is a way to combat that. Number one, stop the fake chit-chat. Number two, stop the phony surveys. Number three, stop that mindless, endless questioning of customers. That's that interrogation that becomes combative converse conversation. And number four, last but not least, stop that magic menu wait of having the customers wait in the waiting area or showroom, whatever, while you're preparing that magic menu for them. So commit yourself to the FMI four-way stop. I think you'll see a lot of good things, a lot of good things can happen. Here we go, menu, both as a sales and compliance tool. Again, not a panacea or a magic bullet for FMI success, but recommend to you that the menu be considered both as a sales and compliance to, uh, tool. Can give you a long list for each one of those categories, as to why I believe, and many people believe that that's true, but only share a couple of them with you here. Number one, from a sales standpoint, menu really, from our thinking, is all about options. It's all about options. And the commitment there, or the goal, is to get all the options out on the table in front of the customer. Uh, the good news is, if we, if we do that, that starts the transparency process. 
And from the customer standpoint, we hope that things, as a result of that, if our menu is prepared properly, that things are clearly seen and, for most people, easily understood. So menus is all about options, getting those things out in front of the customer. What the product is, what the product does for you, and uh, also what, the pro what that means to you individually from a customer presentation standpoint. Compliance, the big save, provides a defense against payment packing charges provides a defense against payment packing charges. That's one of a number of areas that we could rate relate to compliance. But payment packing is such a hot button topic. Uh, let me remind you that payment packing is illegal in every state uh, in, in, in America, uh, either by state statute as it is, is in California, or if not in California, it's by application of your individual state's UDAP laws and provisions. So states have that, and remember UDAP stands for unfair, uh, and deceptive acts and practices. And also remember that our friends over at the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, sometime back, they bought a vowel and their UDAP is really what we call UDAAP, U-D-A-A-P, and that first day is, is the word abusive, which means to uh, abuse, misuse, mistreat, or use wrongly as it relates to our customer, our customer presentation. So, compliance provides a defense against payment packing charges. A great resource, or several of them, for you to contact if you want more information about menus being both a sales and compliance tool. Uh, and you've heard these names before. I would encourage you to contact AFIP, AFIP's Executive Director, Dave Robertson. He can send you a ton of information about menus being both a sales and compliance tool. In addition to that, our good friend, Terry O'Loughlin. Terry, I've known Terry for probably 25 years. Terry's an attorney, he was an AG, assistant AG down in the state of Florida. He's now for a number of years been the Director of Compliance for Rentals and Rentals. And many of you know Terry because you're, rentals, you're a rentals partner. Terry can certainly chat with you as well about why a menu should be thought of as a sales and compliance tool. Uh, tool. Uh, number three, Tom Hudson. We know that, that name, the law firm of, of Hudson Cook. Uh, Tom, is, of course, is the founding partner of that law firm, and he's written articles just about that as both menu as a sales and compliance tool. And last but certainly not least, because the list could go on, but from a time standpoint, I would encourage you to reach out to my good friend Gil Vanover. Uh, many of you know Gil. Gil is, uh, is executive director of ACE, that's Automotive Compliance Education. Uh, he also, his company, GBO3 and Associates, does leaderships uh, auditing and accounting work. And Gil also, and many of you hopefully already have this. Gil is the author of the, uh, this is uh, from a year or so ago, ago now. He's the author of Automotive Compliance, Automotive Compliance in a Digital World. Automotive Compliance in a Digital World. It's a good read, it's an excellent read, and it really ties into what we're talking to with respect to successful menu selling. Let me say before we go to our next slide that from a disclaimer standpoint, uh, please remember that uh, as we talk about any of these things relating to successful menu selling, that is that I'm not an attorney, I certainly don't pretend to be, but nothing that I slash we say, give or show you today is intended in any way as legal advice. It's simply to help you look at, evaluate, and if necessary, perhaps, uh, utilize your, 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 your policies and services in a more professional way and, and have things done the right way in your store. Obviously, consult with your attorney, your house counsel, regarding the legality of any policy or procedures that you would ultimately change or adopt. So, successful menu selling, we want to give you five key ideas. Five key ideas for your reading enjoyment and pleasure. Number one is to introduce the menu properly. Zig Ziglar, they passed away some years ago. Obviously, many of us have his writings and books, whatever, but one of the famous or infamous uh, uh, Zig Ziglar uh, terms that I've always used in class for a lot of years is, hey, you can't uh, close anything effectively that you haven't opened properly. You can't close anything effectively that you haven't opened properly. If you believe that at all, uh, the proper menu introduction is pretty important. Uh, three things, low-key, downstream, non-confrontational. Low-key meaning uh, no high pressure. Downstream meaning it flows with the customer's opinions and remarks. Non-confrontational uh, meaning no selling. No selling the first time through the menu. We want to share with the customer, tell them what the product is, Tell them what the, product, uh, what, the, what, what the product is, what the product does for you, uh, what that means to you. Disclose the cost or pricing to the customer, certainly on paper and even and verbally, and then ask a trial close and see where we're at. So low-key, downstream, non-confrontational, ask a trial close. We're going to give you a little bit later on another slide, 20 words. 
20 words as a recommendation to use as a, as, as, as a, as a menu introduction. Bottom line is we want the customer to, after that trial close, because there's no selling first time through, the customer's got to make a comment. And many of you know this because you've heard me say this before. They will, in fact, talk. That's what we want. They'll make a comment. They'll ask you questions. Sometimes they might verbalize an objection. It might be a valid objection. It might be an invalid objection. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is that's what we want uh, because now we haven't given the customer anything that's really perceived as a sales pitch or sales presentation. We now have the opportunity as they make those comments, ask a question or verbalize an, object, an, an objection. We have the opportunity to, uh, to respond. We have an opportunity to respond to the customer's request for information. And if they see that presentation that way, an opportunity to respond to their request for information, a big part of that time issue goes away, the 187 and the 30 and, and, and the 32. So number two of five uh, successful in use selling uh, five key ideas. Uh, number two is to eliminate five negative trigger words. And I know what you're saying because we've said these words for years. Hey, we've said, and quite frankly, I myself have taught these words for a lot of years. Recommendation for some time now is to eliminate these five negative trigger words from the menu introduction, not necessarily from the presentation or objection handling. I think many times they're fine for, for, for that, but as far as the menu introduction is concerned, recommend to you that we not use the words services, coverages, features, benefits, or programs. Why? It sounds like we're selling. The objective here is no selling the first time through. We get the options out in front of the customer, we make them thirsty, they talk, we respond to the customer's request for information. That's the objective if we buy into it and practice it of conversational selling as of, I think, to the older school of just dialogue and bombarding the customer with question after question after question, and then it becomes an interrogation as far as their thought. Here's a big change, a big change as it relates to what's going on in the industry. Number three is the recommendations use the phrase optional voluntary protection products. Optional voluntary protection products. Optional voluntary protection products. Those of you that have seen me do this before, I've been in your dealerships, we've done workshops together, whatever, for uh, many months and several years under number three, I always said, use the keyword of options. Use the keyword of options. Now the recommendation, quite frankly, is to use the key phrase optional voluntary protection products. I want to digress for a minute and share with you a couple of reasons why. I want to give you some information that's hot off the press uh, to us as providers, dealers, agents, whatever, that many of us have probably not seen. And the information is from two very credible sources. One is from my good friend, Dave Robertson, Executive Director of AFIP, and the second one is from NADA. NADA is Paul Mitri, and Paul, of course, is the uh, Vice President uh, for NADA as it relates to uh, compliance and uh, regulatory affairs. Uh, Dave Robertson, uh, feel free to call Dave and ask him about this, and he knows that I'm mentioning this. Dave published a memo on March 27th of this year, just a few weeks back, and the title of the menu, or the title of the article, is The Big Squeeze is Coming. The Big Squeeze is Coming. Maybe that should be the title of our next quarterly menu, John. I don't know. <laughs> the Big Squeeze is Coming. But let me just read a couple of sentences, if I may, from his seven-paragraph uh, memo. Here it is. Number one, it is inevitable. It is inevitable. The size of the aftermarket product, product revenue pie, will shrink. But the same number of hands will still be in the pie pretty cleverly written. We say it again. It's inevitable. The size of the aftermarket product revenue pie will shrink, but the same number of hands will still be in the pie. And here's the key phrase, a couple of sentences from paragraph number two. Are you ready for this? Our friends at the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, are back in action. Here's the sentence uh, from Dave Robertson. It is likely that, it is likely that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau will launch its program to limit the profit, to limit the profit from the sale of aftermarket products, despite the introduction of the NADA margin guidelines. This is the first time that they've really gone after our industry directly as it relates to limiting the profit. Obviously, some years back, they were looking at their rate uh, discrimination and got into the NADA Fair Credit Compliance Policy and Program. 
Well, as a result of this, NADA has written a new program which just announced this month and is referred to as the NADA Model Leadership Voluntary Protection Products Policy. And we'll look at that just briefly in a couple of minutes. So back to Dave Robertson's memo. He says, despite the introduction of the NASA margin guidelines, concurrent with a reduction in car sales volume. And here's the situation. The situation is exacerbated by higher monthly car payments with fewer dollars left to purchase aftermarket products. A couple of key thoughts with numbers. I just saw this over the weekend from Edmunds.com. Maybe you saw it as well. And that is in March of 2019, the average APR for new car transactions and light trucks for last month, March, March of 19, was 6.36%. 6.36%. That's a 10-year. That's a 10-year high. 10-year high. And among that uh, March 19 report, 14% of those APRs were about 10%. So 14% were 10% or higher APRs, and that's the highest it's been since 2000, 2008. So back to the APRs again. This year, through March 6.36. A uh, year ago, March of 18, it was 5.66. Five years ago, back to 4. Uh, 4.44. So a final comment from the Dave Robertson memo, uh, maybe right between the eyes, and here's what he says. Think about non-compliant menu sales, and here's his sentence. The sleight of hand, the sleight of hand finesse of the past will be trumped by knowledgeable and ethical buyer participation presentations. So there you go. I would encourage you to call Dave Robertson with respect to that. The second source is from NADA. A native Paul Mitri. Uh, they they just released in in, uh, in April the fair credit or the uh, dealership voluntary protection products policy. Uh, it's designed to offer guidance to agents, dealers, product providers, and any other personnel involved with the uh, the pricing and the sale of FNI products, FNI products and services. It's 18 pages long. It's 18 pages long. It's also good to note that among these 18 pages uh, long and what NADA legal says, this is certainly not mandated, at least yet, by any federal law and has not been adopted by any federal agency uh, as of yet, but it's hot off the press. Uh, page 16 and 18, let me just read uh, two of the uh, uh, information bullet points under product presentation and sale. Number one, the dealership will doesn't say the dealership might think about it or the dealership has an option, whatever. It says the dealership will inform customers orally that the voluntary protection products it offers are optional. So they're recommending the use and promoting the use of voluntary protection products and obviously the word optional and giving that to the customer orally. Also on page 16, another will. The dealership will present voluntary protection products to customers and a standard, and here's three key words that we'll touch on today, in a standard, simple menu format. In a standard, simple menu format that at a minimum prominently, prominently discloses. And on the memo, on that page uh, 16, it lists eight items, eight things. We don't have time to get into that except to say to you that the very first one is that the purchase of any listed voluntary protection product is optional. So now you have the NATO recommendation of the three words, voluntary protection products, the use of the word optional orally, and also the word optional in the written menu as well. So there you go. For your waiting enjoyment and pleasure, that will be a lot of things to consider and talk about as our year progresses. To me, the three words that really struck me right between the eyes of that, three of them, were the words simple menu format. I mean, think about your menu. Uh, would that comply that way? I know that's kind of subjective, whatever, but simple menu format. Uh, how's your columns? Uh, how's your... Uh, you know, how many do you have? Platinum, gold, silver, customer, bronze, uh, you know, uh, A, B, C, and D, uh, preferred, standard, basic economy. How many of those things are just uh, repetitive? From a customer standpoint, what do they think? Here we go again. Can I trust you? Are you credible? Do you care? Is this guy just trying to sell me something or are they truly trying, trying to help me? So a simple menu format. So I would encourage you, and you can get that now, the 18-page uh, document. From NADA, uh, go to their website. If you're a NADA member, it's under Driven Publications from uh, from NADA University, and it's hot off the press. Just released this month. Okay, let's move on. Number four of five key ideas: stop selling, stop selling, and start offering options. 
many we want to offer the opportunity to customize. More and more stores that I get into, and I like to think of it as because of, we've been recommending this for, for several years now and people are starting to think about it, to get away from the three or four or even five column menu because it is so, uh, so just uh, you know, from a customer standpoint, here we go again, so repetitive and redundant, is to uh, consider a single column menu. A single column menu, maybe having your menu heading be the unique, unique financial package, and list your products in that single column menu only one time. Now, it's a single column menu by my words, my definition. It really is two columns because we'll show you that in, just, that in just a minute. I think just to the right of that should be a custom menu that's blank. That gives you that opportunity to, uh, to talk to the customer about the offering, their opportunity to customize based upon their driving habits and ownership experience. So number four, stop selling, start offering options, offer opportunity to customize. Uh, simple menu format. I think that that kind of goes with what NADA is trying to say in their in their latest publication. Number five, commit to the three C's. Three C's being compliance, completeness, and consistency. Compliance, completeness, and, and, and consistency. The big one, of course, is compliance, number one, definition of compliance, acquiescence to rules, requests, and demands. From our standpoint, it means following the law. I uh, wrote an article some time back, we talk about it in our classes from, a, from an acronym standpoint, and we, we, we talk about compliance, the compliance recipe. And, that, that, and the fact that the compliance recipe is really comprised of four key ingredients. Those four key ingredients, the first letters of each one of the four, are CEIT, or CEIT. So the recipe for compliance is comprised of four key ingredients. What are they? Number one is character. E stands for ethics. Uh, number, two, number three is integrity. Number four is transparency. So think about that as you put together your FMI missions, your policy statements, you talk with your compliance officers about everything that's being done in your stores. The, rec the recipe for compliance is comprised of four key ingredients. Character, the moral or ethical makeup of a person or group. Ethics, ethics of course are the rules or standards that govern the conduct of the members of a profession. Integrity, the strict or firm adherence to that code or standard of, of values. And last but certainly not least, transparency. Making sure that things are clearly seen and as much as we can to have them have them be easily understood by, by, by our buyers. So the three C's, compliance, completeness, and consistency. Successful menu selling, we promised it. Here's the 20 words. I've broken it down for you in, in, in really two, 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 uh, two topics there or two items. But here's the first 10 words. Folks, Mr. Customer, Here's, and here's his, here's his one word, Mr. Customer, here's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products. Very simple. Mr. Customer, here's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products. Ten words. The second ten uh, that are available to protect your credit and your investment. So how does that flow? Folks, with that in mind, here's a menu breakdown, here's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products that are available to protect your credit and your, and, and your investment. Next, let's talk about IBSs and also IBQs, impact benefit statements and impact benefit questions. Impact benefit statements address to the customer what this product does for you. Remember, a feature is something, but a benefit does something. So we're doing the, the benefit of does. And then secondly to that, whenever possible, also shares with, to them, with them directly what that means to you as well. I'll give you two or three examples of that uh, in, just, in just a couple minutes. So impact benefit statements, IBS, uh, what it is, what this does for you, and what that means to you as well. Impact benefit questions. Well, we had a big discussion about that in our, in, in our, in, in our last uh, uh, webinar, also in our, in our training classes. This came up at our uh, industry uh, summit last year. We had a sales psychologist speaking to us, whatever, and basically we're talking about getting away from maybe the questions that we've taught or I've taught since the 1970s. So here's a thought process for you. Uh, impact benefit statements. Uh, we won't ask questions, but they're, but, but they're power questions uh, that, that have the customer stop and think. And we also learned uh, power words. And two of the most powerful words that we can use are the words one and describe. So here's a recommendation. Instead of asking what we've taught for decades, how many miles a year do you drive? How long do you plan to keep your new car? Is there a chance you might be keeping this vehicle another six months a year longer or driving some additional miles due to a change in driving habits within your family? 
uh, where do you currently have your vehicle serviced and, serviced and maintained? And Mr. Customer, how much time and mileage is remaining on the vehicle service contract on, on the vehicle you're planning to sell to us? Now, we can go out and ask those if we want, but we also couple that with other things. Remember what they are? Did your salesperson happen to discuss with you the manufacturer's limited warranty on your new vehicle? See, that's great, or I'm sorry, it isn't, didn't. What is your understanding of that manufacturer's limited warranty? We did the timeline illustration, show on paper the area of exposure or miles at risk, where you're gonna be 100% risk responsible, who will have to pay the cost of any major minor repairs after that limited warranty is expired? That would be me. Any idea of what's happening to repair costs due to inflation is obviously going up. And number five was really all, almost a trial close. Doesn't it make sense then if you can to do what? To eliminate that, eliminate that impact of inflation and the cost of most major minor repairs on your new car, folks, based upon your driving habits for the next blank years or blank miles. Many of us are still doing that today, and that's okay. I would say to you, if it's working, if it's don't change, uh, don't change. If your CSI is good, the people that you work with, your FMI director, your dealer, your GM, your compliance officer, your general agent, don't change necessarily, necessarily for change's sake. However, if you're not where you want to be, and that approach sounds old, it's stale, it's too, uh, too lengthy, too long, you're trying to consolidate this and make this, uh, uh, this, this presentation or discussion a bit more fresher and really concentrate on the opportunity to uh, pursue conversational selling as opposed to the 8, 10, 12 questions of dialogue. Here's four questions for you that I think you might have some, some, some very good success with. And here they are. Number one, what is the one technology feature that excites you the most on your new vehicle? What is the one technology feature that excites you the most on your new vehicle? You can take and run that with whatever the customer says, uh, any, any technology feature at all, and you're providing them value-added information, tying it into what that does. Is it a, 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 a module? Is it a component part? Is it a part whatever? Uh, what it costs to, to replace it? Talk about the technology and pricing today, whatever. So you're accomplishing a lot of things with that one open-ended question. What is the one technology feature that excites you the most on your new vehicle? Number two, how would you describe a, typ a typical month of your vehicle? Well, you're going to learn the same thing with that question in a conversational way. What is for business? What is for personal? What is for pleasure? Whatever. That takes us to number three. How would you describe a typical weekend for you and your family? Kids to soccer pra practice, meet at golf with the guys, doing this, that, and the other thing, whatever, what that does to the mileage as it relates to the car, and maybe even the, the necessity for another vehicle as well. So maybe the customer hasn't really heard those three presented that way before. The one technology feature, uh, whatever that is, uh, uh, describe a typical month with your vehicle, driving habits, how would you describe a typical weekend, and one number four that we know works very, very well. And this sets you up for many of your products and services now referred to as the voluntary uh, uh, protection products uh, that we have at the store. And that is what one word would best describe what one word would best describe how you felt when? Think about that. What one word would best describe how you felt when? Now, verbalize a story or situation. That could be anything. You came out of the supermarket, you came out of this, the Kroger, the Tom Thumb, uh, Safeway down in Texas where I live, whatever, and walked up to the car and there it was, man. There's that shopping cart right next to the door, the dent, the ding, the scrape, the scratch. What one word would best describe how you felt when that happened? Maybe you can't repeat that word. Or you're driving along, you see it, but before it's too late, you hit it, and you hear the thud, and now you know there's a real issue, and, and you hit whatever it, it, it was. Nails, glass, metal, potholes, rocks, tree limbs, debris in the roadway that, that, that causes blowouts. What one word would, would best describe how you felt with the wind? What one word would best describe how you felt when that warning light that went on on your dash? And there was the orange blast, the orange uh, 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 icon, there was maybe a, a bell or a ding, whatever, and you look down, you're driving, you're by yourself, you can't make it out, and you probably panic. So what one word would best describe how you felt when, and now verbalize a story or a situation, situation with the customer. So, IBS, impact benefit statements, what this does, what that means to you, impact benefit questions. That's just four of them. Uh, try these and see how you like them. And the great thing about this, you can ask these kinds of questions anytime during that presentation of the customer. It doesn't just have to be in that segment that we always carved out as the sales presentation to the, to the buyer. Again, what we're trying to do now is incorporate and commit ourselves 
to conversational selling as opposed to monologue and the old presentation of just the dialogue uh, blasting the customer with, uh, with, 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 with questions. Next, uh, three ideas. We have uh, products that uh, are near and dear to our hearts. As an example, uh, impact benefit statement for a vehicle service contract. Impact benefit statement for a vehicle service contract. Folks, what that does for you is that it gives you, gives you a hedge against inflation on the cost of parts and labor as it provides you with what? Extended coverage for major and minor repairs at a reasonable cost. That's what it does. Now, we don't have it written here, but now what I would say as a follow-up to that, and folks will be happy to know what that means to you, is, you, is, you, is, the, is the fact that you won't have to budget your cash. You won't have to budget your cash for costly repair bills later. So, the service contract impact benefit statement gives you a hedge against inflation on the cost of parts and labor as it provides you with extended coverage for major and minor repairs at a reasonable cost. What that means to you, of course, is folks will be happy to know you won't have to budget your cash for costly repair bills later. Maybe you throw in some things there to give the customer some new information that they haven't heard before, like the last year's AAA survey, where it was, what, 64 million uh, drivers in America, AAA, said could not afford a, uh, a, a repair bill between five and $600 without going into a significant debt. So we share that information with them as well. The bottom line is our payment with our unique financial package provides you with a known manageable investment as opposed to the payment escalation risk with just your vehicle payment or, or base payment. We provide you this and offer you this because we care, we really do, not just about your business today, but we care about gaining your respect, earning your repeat and referral business for the future for the future as well. Next option, let's talk just a minute about tire and wheel road hazard. What this does for you as an example, it gives you repair or replacement coverage for tires and rims. Here's a great phrase for you if you're not using it, including mounting, balancing, and taxes as it provides you with protection, response, and service necessary in, in, in time of need. So again, gives you repair or replacement coverage for tires and rims, including mounting, balancing, and taxes as it provides you with the protection, response, and services necessary in time of need. So what that means to you, of course, is if your tire and rim comes in contact with any of those bad things, what are they? Nails, glass, metal, potholes, rocks, tree limbs, debris in the roadway that uh, causes blowouts, uh, we're providing you with coverage and protection. Once again, uh, we provide you that because we care. And remember, in a, the AAA people again, a, a number that they threw out last year, the average pothole repair claim is $300 per repair. And they also reminded us that the pothole uh, repair uh, industry business annually in America is a, a $3 billion industry. So $300 per repair, and overall it's a $3 billion industry. So let's remind them what it is, what it does, and what that means to you as well. Another example, let's do GAP, Guaranteed Asset Protection. What that means to you, what it does for you, what it does for you is that it protects your budget, your credit, your savings, your total investment against financial loss as it pays your deficiency that exists between your insurance settlement and your outstanding finance or lease balance. We have to know what that means to you, of course, is basically this. If your car gets stolen and not recovered or totaled in an accident, you won't, here's the key, you won't have to pay the difference. You won't have to pay the difference between what your insurance check is and what you owe the bank or credit union. Again, what could be better than that? We provide you with this uh, because we care, we really do. Our unique financial package provides you once again with a known manageable investment as opposed to the unknown and unexpected risk or need to self-insure uh, and accept liability yourself. So what position would you rather be in? Payment escalation risk perhaps uh, with your just fixed monthly payment of the vehicle uh, or the known manageable based investment, which now becomes fixed because unfortunately that fixed monthly payment on your vehicle might become variable if these things happen to you on a regular or even an irregular basis. So that's three ideas for you we have our products, part of our unique financial package that gives you an idea of uh, does and means and sharing that with the customer as part of your, your successful menu, menu presentation. All right, next up, uh, a menu presentation. Don't get hung up on how this looks or the number of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, of, of products, whatever, or the cost. This is just an idea for training, for training purposes value-added protection, and I mentioned to you the idea that we'd like to talk about a single column menu. So a single column menu, very simply, is one that just lists your products one time. 
In this case, we've listed what five uh, five options: tire and wheel appearance, guaranteed asset protection, gap prepaid maintenance, and last but certainly not least, the vehicle service contract. Then on the right-hand side is custom. We'll leave that blank because we're going to verbalize that with the customer right after our menu introduction. Then either electronically or if we don't have that capability, manually fill that in as we present these things uh, to the customer. So how might we do this from a verbalization standpoint? I recommend to you before you start this, you may have done this earlier in the discussion with your customer as you've gone over the numbers and figures, but again, to, to go over several things with your buyer as well. So all we have to say, Mr. Customer, is something like this. Folks, as previously discussed, as previously discussed, uh, uh, let me discuss with you uh, the terms and conditions uh, under which you can take delivery of your vehicle today uh, with approved credit, of course. Now maybe we verbalize the fact that the amount financed is $28,000, your payment's $450.94, that's for six years, 72 months, and your annual percentage rate is, is 5%. So Mr. Customer, as previously discussed, once again, uh, your, uh, these are the terms and conditions under which you can take delivery of your vehicle today uh, with approved credit. Now after I say something like that is now when I launch into my 20 words. I like to, the way I talk, is to use the phrase with that in mind. So right after that, we would say, Mr. Customer, with that in mind, with that in mind, here's a menu breakdown. Here's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products that are available to protect your credit and your investment. One more time, Mr. Customer, here's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products that are, op that are available to protect your credit and your investment. Folks, as you can see, our unique financial package here at ABC Motors is, com is comprised of five options. The great news, folks, you can really choose all, all, of, all five of these options. Quite frankly, folks, you can choose none of them because nothing is required or it's a, con or it's a condition of financing. Or folks, like many of our clients here at ABC, what you can really do is from this unique financial package list, truly based upon your driving habits and ownership experience, customize a plan that does that just for you. It, it's truly in line with your driving habits. Folks, let me ask you, uh, which of these options would work best uh, for you and your family this afternoon and see what the customer says. One more time through. So how rapidly was that? We're getting a trial close out and the customer has a chance to respond and I'm not reading the menu to the customer. Mr. Customer, here's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products that are available to protect your credit and your investment. Folks, as you can see here at ABC, our unique financial package is comprised of five options. The great news, folks, is you can choose all of these options. Quite frankly, folks, you can choose none of them because nothing is required or it's a condition of financing, or folks, if, if you like, and as this column indicates here, you can truly customize a plan and develop your own plan based upon your driving habits and own ownership experience. Folks, let me ask you, which of these options would work best for you and your family this afternoon? And then see what they say. And then obviously, if you want to take a longer approach to the presentation, you can take each one of those, uh, of those, of those products that are part of your tire and wheel and refer to them as option one, two, three, four, five, whatever, and give the customer the, the impact benefit statement and or an impact benefit uh, question uh, that, that goes with that and also related, related to what it does for you, what that means to you as well. So one more time, folks, here's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products that are available to protect your credit and your investment. As you can see our unique financial package is comprised of five options. The great news, folks, you can, choose, you, can choose, you can choose all five of those options. Quite frankly, folks, you can choose none of them because nothing is required or is a condition of financing. Or folks, if you're like many of our clients here at ABC, you can truly mix and match your options here on the left-hand side. And as the right-hand column illustrates, truly customize a plan. Customize a plan that fits your driving habits perfectly. Which of these options would work best for you and your family this afternoon? And see what they say. And see what they say. Finally, Before we refer back to John for your comments or questions or thoughts, whatever, can't believe it's been 45, I would just say to you in conclusion that, that, that menu selling is really not about menus. It really is. Menu selling is not about menus. We know it's not a panacea or a magic bullet for anything. But menus and, and a successful menu selling really is about helping customers, about helping customers to make an informed decision about the optional voluntary protection products that are, that are available to them in connection with, with their purchase. And you know, folks, when you think about it, the bottom line, if we just uh, comply with that, and we think about that as part of our FMI mission or policy statement in our store, 
that says something like this. Every customer knows what they're getting. They agree to buy it. They know why they need it. And they feel good about it when they leave our dealership. That's pretty good. If we would do just that, if we commit to just that, the results can be not only success in sales and F&I, but also, I think, quite frankly, success for ourselves and our families. And finally, last but certainly not least, success for our respective dealerships, our agent partners, and our product providers as well. Again, thank you for joining us today. And let me remind you here that AGWSU and all of us uh, committed uh, to you, your success at AGWS, our commitment is to, have you, is to help you maximize deal profit. Deal profit meaning both running gross and financial and insurance income, but as always to do it the right way. And the right way is in a manner consistent with good customer relations and sound, sound business practices. John? Thank you, Bob. All right, upcoming, we have our workshop here in Warrenville, Illinois, uh, AGWS University from May 13th through the 16th. And our next webinar will be on July 17th at uh, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks again, Bob. Take care. Thanks, everybody.